Welcome to a new video in the series of videos devoted to presentations and writing tips. And in this video we will talk about the basic components of a thesis. So we'll take a very zoomed out view of all the main um, uh, things that should be in a thesis and what they are called. And in uh, later videos we will look at all of these components one by one. So this is a zoomed out version and as before, this is part of the teaching material of ISP Group. It's free to use by anyone who wants to use it, as long as you say where it's from. It's part of the CDIO general stuff, and we are still just uh, learning how to uh, do this first version of the report, which is supposed to be uh, contain this uh, overall structure. Okay, so the things that should be included, uh, I have now here uh, divided them into 10 different things. You can sometimes divide them in more and sometimes in less, but basically there are three, um, three um, parts, you could say. The first part is the initial stuff, which is the title page, the preface, table of content and abstract. Um, and then you come to the main, main material, which is background, materials and methods, sometimes called theory, results and discussion. Uh, or summary and conclusions. So this is sort of the, the, the core part of the, of the thesis. And then uh, after that you have some things that you don't want to put in this core part, uh, but which is necessary to understand these things. So it's uh, complementary information, references, appendix, supplementary material, that kind of stuff. Okay, so now let's go through these things a little bit uh, in a sort of zoomed out way, just what are they in the first glance. So, title page and preface. So, uh, title page, or sometimes just the title, is, um, uh, is the first thing you see. So, it's, it's what is the name of the thesis and, uh, and, uh, and what is on the front page. Typically, you have a separate front page. Uh, and uh, it's, since this is the first thing you see, of course, it should be nice. Uh, and then comes the preface. And the preface says things that are not really part of the thesis, but says things about the preface. Uh, so one key thing for you here is to specify here who has written which parts. So since you are writing uh, the thesis uh, jointly, you need to specify that here in the preface, which usually comes uh, directly after the title page. Here you might also say things like, we dedicate this thesis to, <laughs> to your mother or whoever. Uh, and sometimes you also put some of these things uh, in a separate section called acknowledgements. So this is uh, the optional. You can have both or you can have only one or you can have uh, only the other. And sometimes you also don't have any of them. Uh, but if you want to talk about these kind of things, you put them in either a preface and or an acknowledgements. So, then we have the abstract, and um, the abstract is basically a little mini summary of the entire thesis, so everything. Uh, and uh, it should therefore have all the parts that are in the main, main part. Uh, so it should have the introduction, should have the results, and it should have a sort of discussion zooming out. Uh, and uh, it should have this in a very, very compact way. So usually you have like 150 words or 200 words or something like this. So it's a, you, you have very, very limited space. Um, and apart from that, it should uh, describe all of these things, but it should still be understandable to many. But it should also be a sort of um, commercial uh, selling point to, to people that are potential readers of this. So it should not only be understandable to many, but it should also convince the, the, the potential readers that, that uh, you actually did some cool stuff. And then you need to give some details. And you have 200 words. So these, these things together basically means that abstracts are really difficult to write because uh, you have each word, you need to weigh them really carefully, choose them carefully. So I will devote an entire video just to uh, writing abstracts. And then we come to the main content. Uh, and the first part of the main content uh, is the background, which is sometimes called introduction, 
and uh, this is usually followed by the aims. Might, aims might be included in the background or introduction and, and it might also be a separate subsection. Um, and basically the, uh, the most important uh, part of the introduction and background is to bring everybody up to speed. So you remember this thing about uh, not uh, saying things that the reader or listener does not understand? This is where you use the background to sort of be able to say things more specifically. So, so, uh, so the background is there uh, to introduce all the concepts and bring everybody up to speed so they can understand the rest of the content. But that's only one of the two uh, m most important um, uh, things. The second most important thing is to zoom in on the problem to basically um, uh, end up in uh, the problem statement as a natural consequence of what has already been done. And I will uh, devote an entire video to how to do this in practice. Uh, but once you have said then what you will do and maybe also what you ended up with, you will uh, usually, uh, which is basically the aims, uh, then you might also say something about how the re rest of the thesis or the rest of the paper or something is, is structured. So, so that's the background. And, and then you come to the materials and methods, uh, which might be before and might also be after the, um, the results section. Uh, traditionally it's been before, but now more and more papers are, are moving it uh, to, be, uh, to be in the end. And here you go through existing experimental data, but you also lay the conceptual and notational basis for all the methods uh, so usually you introduce notations and then you go to the methods and to the theory that is being used to obtain the results. So here the methods are usually not new. If they are new, you need to say that specifically. Um, here you also describe what kind of software you're using. And um, it may also include the developed models. So here there are different ways and I will talk more about this uh, when I come to the separate videos on all these things. Uh, it may include the developed mathematical models, but these might also go into the results section. So the results section. Uh, the, the results section is uh, in many senses the most important section because this is where you present what you actually came up with. So what is new? What, what, did you, what are your new results? Uh, so, so this you present in the results section. Uh, and the, uh, what carries this, what's sort of the core of this, is a number of figures and, and uh, usually a few tables as well. So, so this is sort of what, you, what, what is the core of the results. And then you write around them to, to sort of create a logical structure. And then when you have these results and you presented them, then you want to put them into context, into a, a bigger context. And this is what the discussion is for. And the, and the discussion might include a summary or uh, and the conclusions, but these might also sometimes be in separate uh, subsections or, or separate chapters. Um, so uh, the discussion is there to put the results into a broader context. So how does this relate to what others have done? How is this better than what others have done? How, what are the weaknesses? Um, and uh, Usually it's a good idea to start with this short little summary uh, and, uh, and then you spend some time after the summary to say what are the highlights, what are the, what are the strengths and what are the weaknesses. And then in the end you also uh, zoom out a little bit and, uh, and say where can this lead into the future, what are the potentials, what are the doors that have been opened because of what you did. So, and the final thing, uh, which uh, is part of the last part of, of, the, of the thesis, is the extra material. The references, and the, and the references should in some structured way give sufficient information to be able to find all the papers and all the material that have been cited in the rest of the, rest of the thesis. And these should be stated in a consistent manner, so it should be uh, the, the format of these references should, should always be the same. And there are many ways you can do it, and it's not so important which way. Uh, 
unless there is a standard, uh, but we don't have a standard here. It should just be in some logical way where the information is sufficient to find the papers. And then the appendix. The appendix uh, or supplementary information, as it's, all, as, it, as it's also called, has all the extra information that is not needed to understand the story, but it is needed to scrutinize the results, to be able to check the results, and uh, also, importantly, to repeat the results. So uh, this is sort of things that is needed to be able to check the results, but it's not really necessary to understand the main story. So these are the uh, the different parts of, of a thesis, and now we will, uh, or in uh, in future videos, we will have a look at them uh, um, individually.